Spirit of the living God, we give you praise. Father, we lift you up and honor you. Father, bless your children gathered. And Father, help the words be delivered to their hearts. In Jesus' name, we commit this service to you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a great thing to worship God. Hallelujah. Do we all have something to worship our God about? Hallelujah. Has he been good? Can you think what, what the songwriter said? If it had not been for the Lord who be on my side, where would I be? Hallelujah. Can anybody testify with that? Hallelujah. Now, I want to get into it right quick, and I've got a lot to get through. I'm just going to talk upon one scripture. But we have to run right quick, and please, please stay with me and pay attention. We're going to, I'm going to talk in a scripture probably all of us have heard and all of us have read. Hallelujah. Shout out to me, the, the ten lepers, what book is it in? Quick. The ten lepers, what book? It's only in one gospel. What book is it in? A great A star to you. Hallelujah. And what chapter is it in? Is that, is that tumbleweed or cricket sound that I hear? Now, hallelujah. You see, we have to study the word. Because when we say, when is this? You should be, boom. When is this? If I was to say, recite your Beyonce song, you'd be like, all oh, the single ladies or whatever, that, you know, whatever you're saying. You'd be able to do it. Hallelujah. But so when I pick out the scripture, we should be on it. And if you really study the scripture and get it, you, you know where it is. And when you read the word and, and you get a revelation, you always remember where it is in the scripture. Hallelujah. So let's let's try and get that scripture inside. It's Luke 17. Is that because you were looking or because you know? <laughs> oh, wow, well, wow. Well. You know, I love my church members, you know. I love, no, seriously, I'm being deadly serious. I love you guys. I've got the best church members in the world. Hallelujah. Luke 17, verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem. For those that are Bible scholars, you will identify that this is the last time Jesus went to Jerusalem before the crucifixion. Hallelujah. And when you study the Bible and study the times and study the movements, so many things come out. Hallelujah. And the Bible is revealed to you in a different way. And it says he went to Jerusalem and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. The Samaritans were half Jews, half Samaritans. They were, they, they was what, they were a mixed breed at the time. So they were not quite Jews and they were not quite Gentiles and had their own practices. Hallelujah. And then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who wore lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And so was as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I just want to pick out a few things before we get into it. He said this man was a Samaritan. So Jesus was like, this man wasn't a Jew, he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said something that people misinterpret. Jesus said, the queen of the south will rise up in judgment over this generation because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. What Jesus was talking about is a very historical event when the queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon. And Jesus said, you know, the queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon. She wasn't saved. In fact, she was an idol worshiper. And when she came to visit Solomon, she had an encounter and she glorified God. And what Jesus is saying is that there are people that don't believe in God that get a great revelation from him. And these people will stand up in judgment over you. Now, listen very carefully. The name of the sermon is praise is the key to blessing. Hallelujah. Praise is the key to blessing. You see, some stories are in all of the gospels. Some are in two, some are in three. But from Luke chapter 10 to chapter 19, it's very unique 
to Luke. Luke was a doctor. And what you see with Luke, he was a physician. And Luke explains sicknesses in great detail simply because he was a physician, if you read it really well. Now, leprosy is mentioned several times in the Bible. You will know Miriam, the, 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 the brother, or the, sorry, Miriam, the sister of, I like to say Aaron, but no, let's put Moses in there. Um, um, and Miriam was the sister of Aaron and Moses. And true story, my first name, my, my, my dad called me Moses. That was my name, my dad gave me. And my mom said, I don't like that name. And they changed it. So, well, Aaron, Moses' his brother was Aaron, and they, they changed it. So my first name was Moses. I give glory to God, because that's hard to live up to, hallelujah. But Aaron was up and down, so it's okay, hallelujah. But, like, but he was still the high priest. But that was my name, Moses. And I think, you know, it, Moses don't suit me, hallelujah. So, so um, but Moses was my name. True story. And, and Miriam spoke against Moses. Why? Because Moses married a black woman. Hallelujah. And they, they, they were furious. And they spoke against this because he married the Ethiopian. And then God, who's against every form of racism, became angry. Because the Bible is not, the Bible is a color agnostic book. You have to understand, the Bible is not interested in the physical color of a person. It doesn't go into that. The Bible is interested in kingdom or not. It's a color agnostic book. And when God saw racism, God became furious. Hallelujah. So if you're racist, repent. Hallelujah. And then there was Naaman, a soldier, a valiant man who had leprosy. And there was a man that Jesus uh, encountered called Simon the leper. And Jesus ate in the house of Simon the leper. But leprosy up until the 70s was an incurable disease. Hallelujah. It was, it's called something different today that, that, that I've forgotten, but it was incurable and it ate and you died and it ate your body. Hallelujah. But what we come to find the scene on the border of Gal Galilee and Samaria, we come to meet 10 lepers and we see 10 lepers. And what do we see about them? We see them congregating together. Hallelujah. 10 people with the same issue congregating together. And what you see in life, what you see in human psychology is people with the same misery kind of walk together. People with the same issues. Depressed people walk with depressed people. Drug addicts walk with drug addicts. Alcoholic, alcoholics, when they're not isolated, walk with alcoholics. Gossipers roll with gossipers. Because if somebody's gossiping to you and you don't want to hear the gossip, you shut them down. Hallelujah. But gossipers roll, roll with gossipers. Hallelujah. And liars roll with liars. Thieves roll with thieves. Hallelujah. And conversely, those that complain, roll with complainers. That's why I don't like complaining too much. Hallelujah. When I hear complaining, I, I isolate myself from complainers. Hallelujah. Because complainers mean you're not grateful sometimes. You know, sometimes there's people that are negative, always complain. Have you ever encountered someone like that before? And then there are people that surround themselves with people that are interested in the word of God. You know, I love it when I go to somebody and say, listen, I have this issue. I say, what does the word say about this issue? If you're surrounded by people that love the word, they always look to the word for a solution. When you have an issue, if you're surrounded by prayerful people, Sister Naomi, you, 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 when you've got an issue, they, they lead you to prayer. Hallelujah. When you're surrounded by people that are worshippers, you become a worshipper. So when, you, when people look at, if you look at your friendship group, it is indicative of who you are. Hallelujah. It's indicative of who you are. If you're with people that are not serious in the word, you'll be surrounded by people that are not serious in the word. It's just the way life is. But if you're, if you're around people that are really fired up about around the word of God, you become fired up around the word of God. That's why you don't see eagles rolling with chickens, hallelujah. You don't see that. You, you just see people, and, and, and as the worldly idiom says, birds of a feather flock together. So you see the same type of people together. And you saw 10 lepers all together. You also see that in the book of Kings, four lepers congregating together. Hallelujah. And one of the reasons... While they were stood afar off, because under the law of Moses, there was isolation period. You see, so this, this isolation of COVID was all the way back then, hallelujah. And some of you, you've had COVID, you've isolated properly. Give glory to God. I know you're in the church and you've not followed the COVID rules. Can we speak the truth? Some of you have not been doing, or some of you like me, didn't do it properly, hallelujah. I didn't take my test. Shh, is this being recorded? Let me be quiet. Let's move on. Right. Hallelujah. I don't want to be arrested. I followed every COVID rule uh, that, that has been out there for the, for the record. Now, listen carefully. The law of Moses said you had to stay, stay 50 yards away from people. So look at the scene. 
They, Jesus entered the village and they were on the outskirts of the village because they couldn't, they couldn't fraternize with other people. They were total outcasts. But Jesus, son of the living God, if you're, if you're an outcast in any way, he will embrace and welcome you. And what happened is they had to stand 50 feet away. They couldn't mingle. They couldn't do anything. Is everyone still with me? And that was, if you go to Leviticus, he says it very clearly what lepers had to abide by. And it's interesting, leprosy at the time was seen as a, as a punishment for a sin and the fact that the wrath of God was upon you. That's what how the Jews looked at leprosy. And isn't it so great that Jesus met lepers and Jesus does two things, takes away your sin and the wrath of God that is upon you. Hallelujah. And it's interesting, the lepers came to Jesus with a desperate need. Now, some of us were that cute and that cool, but I can submit to you today, everybody has a desperate need that you cannot fulfill. Everybody has something that you do not have it in your hand to do. Everyone has something in their life that they need shifted that you cannot shift without the intervention of God. Somebody needs to achieve something on this earth that you cannot achieve unless God helps you to achieve it. Hallelujah. Everybody has a desperation point when it comes to God. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting. It's... This, this parable talks about something, hallelujah. It talks about ingratitude. It talks about ingratitude. And why? Because we read that 10 were healed, but only one came back. And ungratefulness is a constant theme in the lives of people. It's a constant theme. You see, there, there, there was, and, and sometimes things have shifted. In this way, you see people are ungrateful to, to, to people. I was speaking to a friend, and it's more young people, and he was 23. He said, Oh, I've lent my mum money, and uh, she has to pay me back. And I thought, Wait a minute, how does that work? You know, I get it, but how can that work? You know, your mum's brought me up all these years, and, how, and I met, personally, I was confused. And ungratefulness is something everyone understands. You know why? When people are ungrateful to you, you feel it. Even, you know, there are people, they're on the road. Some of you drivers, you road rage folk. Maybe the people on the left. You know, when someone cuts you up or you stop and let someone go and they don't thank you with the hazard lights. Some of you become angry. Hallelujah. Just some small things like that. If you open a door for somebody, some small things, they don't say thank you. Some of you become very angry. Sometimes if you buy, you buy something for someone, they don't say thank you. You go tell the whole world how ungrateful that person, look at that person, you know, I bought them something, they didn't say thank you. It bothers you. Ungratefulness is something that eats into the heart of people and bothers them. Some of you can remember 30 years ago when someone didn't say thank you. Hallelujah. I can remember that. I was 15 years old. I had 10 pounds to my name. Janet was her name. 10 pounds I had to my name. 10 pounds. That's all I had to my name. And Janet said, oh, and me and Janet were tight. She worked in KFC. I worked in Woolworths. I would go to KFC and get discount. She would give me drink-free burgers. She would come and we used to get 20% off the pick and mix. And we would share. Me and Janet were tight. This was in 1991. She said, Aaron, I need 10 pounds. It was my last 10 pounds. It was Janet. So I said, Janet, there's the 10 pounds. She never thanked me and she never gave me it back. And it's 1991 and it still bothers me to this very day. What ungratefulness, hallelujah. You take someone's last tempo, you don't thank them, you don't give it back. It still bothers me. I still, and someone said, oh, Janet's on Facebook five years ago. I wanted to join Facebook just so I could say, where's my 10 pounds? Hallelujah. And you didn't thank me. It still bothers me. Hallelujah. So ungratefulness is something we understand and it's something that bothers us. Hallelujah. When people are ungrateful, you cook something, just like you cook for someone, they don't thank you or they don't say, oh, this tasted good. You feel it. So ungratefulness is an, is an interesting thing. But these people, they cried out to Jesus in a loud voice. And they said, Master, have mercy on us. And you know the Old Testament was written in Greek and the word is depotes, which means the one with supreme authority. That's what it means. They said, the one with supreme authority, have mercy over us. And listen carefully, they never asked for healing. They never asked for healing. They didn't say, take this leprosy away. They never asked for healing. They just simply said, have mercy upon us. And if you're here today, you're going through something. Sometimes you don't even have to ask for the Lord to deal with a certain thing you're going through. Just throw yourself at his mercy. Hallelujah. 
And you see, it's oftentimes just appeal to the mercy of God. They never ask to be healed. And when you're reading it well, the Bible says when Jesus saw them, read it together. It says when Jesus saw them, to the observant reader, it doesn't say when Jesus heard them. It says when Jesus saw them. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw them. In other words, when Jesus sees you where you're at your point of pain, Jesus sees what you're going through, and Jesus is with you in that moment, and Jesus looks at you with compassion, and he sees what you're going through. The Bible says it this way, you don't have a high priest that is not touched by your infirmities. Jesus looks at you and sees what you're going through. When I was when I was 11 years old, I said I was in the Church of England, and I said to my, my priest, I remember he had an impact on me, Father Christopher and Father Patrick. You know, you had to call him Father. I said, Father Christopher, I want to be a priest. That's what I said to him when I was 11. And he said something to me I'll never forget. He said, No one wants to be a priest. Hallelujah. He says it's a calling. And he said to me, and, 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 those of you that watch The Crown, and this triggered my memory. There was a big accident in Wales where, where a wall fell on a load of school children. I don't know. Uh, come on. I know you guys watch Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hula. Uh, some of you even stream illegally, hallelujah, and you're in church. Hallelujah. Let's keep it real. But what happened is, is, is a wall fell on a load of children and they died. And he was a priest in seminary school. And he said, Lord, why did this happen? And he said, the Lord gave him a vision that God was in the rubble with the children. And when Jesus sees your suffering, he, he's not an abstract God. He's in the suffering with you. Hallelujah. Jesus feels your pain. And the Bible says that Jesus saw them. Hallelujah. He's, you're, he, you're, he's not an invisible God to your suffering. Jesus sees everything that you're going through. Hallelujah. And Jesus, he didn't say be healed. He didn't say that. He said, go and show yourself to the priests. Why did that have to be done? Once again, read the Levitical book. And if you're a student of the Bible, Jesus quotes every Old Testament book. Every Old Testament book, Jesus quotes it thoroughly. Hallelujah. Even when he's tempted by the devil, he quotes Deuteronomy. He quotes every Old Testament book. And what they said in the book of Leviticus is when you have leprosy, you have to go to the priest who will examine you and then give you a certificate to say you're now clean from your leprosy Sister, sister, sister Nicole, and you can now go to fraternize with society. It was the priest that had to give you a certificate to allow you to do that. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, go to the priest. And the Bible says when they were on their way, not when he said go to the priest, when they were on their way, they received healing. And many times, oftentimes, healing is a process. You might receive the word, but you still have to go through the process to get to healing. Jesus said, go to the priest. And the Bible says, as they were going, they were healed. And you have to go through a process to get total healing. It, many times, and sometimes, you, you get the healing, but you still got the, you still got the mark. And, you, and you, you've still got the mark of trauma. And you still have to go through that as a process. Is it once to win me? And as they were on their way, they received their healing. Healing is a process. And what is interesting, they were not healed immediately. But there was a sign of obedience. Jesus said, go on your way to the priest. They, they could have said, well, we, we don't want to go. But they had to be obedient to receive the healing. Another famous person, a valiant man that I like, was Naaman. And he had leprosy. You see, and, and it's interesting. The Bible often talks about the greatness of a person, then their issue. And because you've got an issue, it doesn't mean you're not great. Hallelujah. It says Rahab, the prostitute. But Rahab was great. Hallelujah. So the, the Bible speak about your greatness, but it will also speak about your issue. And just because you're going through something, just because you have an issue, it doesn't detract from your greatness. Hallelujah. And what happened is, is Naaman was a valiant man, a general, a soldier. And the Bible says, but, but he had leprosy. And what happened is he had a servant girl and the servant girl said, you know what? There's a prophet in my hometown called Elijah. He can heal you from this leprosy. And so Naaman turned up. And what happened is, is Jesus is a different personality. Someone look at someone and say, Jesus is different. What happened is this. Is when Elijah had to heal Naaman, do you know what Elijah done? Elijah saw him and said, you know what, I'm not coming down anywhere near, near this guy. He said, look from his house and saw the leper. I thought, boy, I don't want none of that. Right? Because the leprosy was highly contagious. And what the prophet said to him is, just go and wash in the, the river. Seven times. Seven being the very perfection of God. 
the number that is the perfecting of God. He said, go and wash in the river seven times to be healed. And the man became furious. He said, he said, there's bigger rivers in Damascus. And you've asked me to come to, in, in, to this river. Hallelujah. I could have just done it there. He said, why did the prophet come and lay his hands on me and just wave his hand and say, be healed? And then he said, let's go. And then the, the leper said, I'm going. Then one of his servants said, my father, if the prophet asked you to do a big thing, you would have done it. Why not do this small thing? And the Bible says he dipped himself seven times in the river and his skin was like that of a baby, totally healed. But he had to follow an ordinance. He had to be obedient to the word. And those of us, sometimes when we're not obedient to the word, we reap what we sow. But when we're obedient to the word, it creates healing. And when we understand the ordinance of God, things can change. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting. Ingratitude. Do we thank God as much as we ask him for things? So if we ask God for 10 things, do we thank him 10 times? Or is the balance, we're asking God for things more than we're thanking him? I'm just throwing it out there. So, so, so we get an ocean of blessings and give drops of praise and thankfulness. What is the balance between asking and thanking God? What is the balance between asking God for things and praising him? Sometimes in your closet, you just, you just let go in your closet. And sometimes, on, on, I know we're fasting, or some of us anyway, but I know we're fasting, hallelujah. And what happens is, so, so on Friday, I just said, so that I'm just going to praise you, God. I'm just going to just, I'm just going to tell you about how great you are. We just, we just get in our closet. Don't forget asking him for things. Do we just praise him? Do we just speak to him about who he is? Are we just thankful to him? Hallelujah. And it's interesting. The 10 lepers, Jesus said, go and be examined so they could get their certificate so they could mingle with society again. They wanted to be free, listen carefully, to do what they wanted to do. So listen, the nine, listen carefully, they didn't come back. All they were interested in was getting the benefits of what Jesus had done and not giving him the praise. They just wanted the benefit. And the benefit was once they got to the priest, they could go back to their normal life. So many of us in our Christian walk, we want the benefit of what Jesus done, but we don't want to give him the praise. So all we want is the blessing and the benefit without giving God his due. And so these people thought, you know what? I just want to go to the priest and I want to be released and I want to mingle into society. That's all they cared about. Hallelujah. But Jesus singled out one man. Why? Because of his faith. Now, it's interesting. They all shouted. In other words, they all prayed. So many of us will pray. But none of them didn't praise. So we might pray, but where is the praise? Every, all of them shouted out to Jesus. We want something. So they all prayed and they shouted out to him. Hallelujah. But only one of them returned to praise. And Jesus said, you know what? There's something about your faith. Now, hear this and hear this good. There's something that will elevate your praise and prayer life. When you ask Jesus for something and he does it, it elevates your faith and your praise. So you might, you might, it might be a small thing that, you know, there's a job, for example, and you say, Lord, I really want this job and you get it. It creates an automatic or it should create an automatic thing in you to praise and to, to give him thanks. Is everyone still with me for a second? So when you ask for something and it happens, something should happen in your life that creates the power of praise in you. So when you, pr when you, Pray, when, you're, when you receive answers to your prayers, it should, you should have an elevation in praise. Hallelujah. So in other words, because we should always be thankful, we must maintain the attitude of praise. The Bible says, enter his gates with praise. Hallelujah. And thanksgiving. Now it's interesting. As soon as the nine got what they wanted, they forgot Jesus. And listen to this very carefully. This is a stumbling block to many people. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a spiritual thing. Some of you don't get what you want from God because of the attitude and the way you will act is when you get it. And God knows if I give them this thing, they will forget about me. So if, if, you, if you don't have a heart of praise, a heart of thankfulness, Jesus will say, wait a minute, is it worth giving this person this thing because it's not good for them? But if, you're, if you have it in your heart, that when you it's not about what you receive from God that makes you praise him. You just praise him for who he is. But some of us, we just, we just praise God 
just because what, for what we can get, not for who he is. And some of us are just looking to God for what we can get. Is everyone still with me? And the attitude is simple this morning. It's just praise him and thank him for one thing, the cross. That if you haven't got to thank him and praise him for anything else, thank him for the cross. Hallelujah. And the nine, they forgot about Jesus. They forgot. And verse 14 to the observant reader says they were what? Cleansed. Hear me carefully, please. Verse 14 says they were cleansed as they were going their way. The Greek word for cleansed is kafasis. And you understand that word because it's where we get the word kafathic from. When I, when I iron, that's, I, it relaxes me. So I feel, I say, when I iron, it's kafathic. Well, how, how do you say the word? Uh, excuse me, you're, eh? it's, give you, God bless you. What she said. What she said. I cannot pronounce that word. But that word of what she said, that's where we get that word from. But the Greek word for cleanse is kafasis. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus said. That's what they got. And then 15 says they were healed which is a Greek word, Iome, hallelujah, which means that they were healed. So they were, there was catharsis, cleansed, there was Iome, which is healing. And in verse 19, when the man returned, the one returned, it used the word um, so-so, which means that he saved. That word is used over 100 times in the New Testament, and 70% of the time is saved. So the others got healing. The others were cleansed. But only one of them got salvation. Hallelujah. So nine, listen carefully, because of their lack of thankfulness and praise, nine got the benefits that were temporary, but only one got life transformational blessings because of his thanks and praise. They got temporary blessing. One got eternal blessing because of his praise and for, and for his thankfulness. So the one got something that others didn't get. Hallelujah. So the ten were healed, but only one was saved. The 10 got a physical improvement to their life. But you know, you could be physically doing well, but you could be spiritually bankrupt. So we look for spiritual improvement rather than physical some of the times. Because the Bible says, do not fear the one that can kill the body, but fear the one that can put the soul into hell. Hallelujah. But Jesus asked something. Jesus still asked a question, and we touched upon questions last week. Jesus said, where are the nine? But it's interesting, some of you could say, wait a minute, Jesus um, asked them to go. So all they were doing is what Jesus said to do. Jesus said, where are the nine? He asked a question. And, and, and you could look, I, I like to picture the Bible in, 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 in reality. So sometimes I look at the scene and Jesus, picture Jesus, he's like, where are the nine? So in other words, he expected to see them. Are you still with me? Jesus said, where are the nine? But listen carefully. Jesus asked them to go, Pastor Ozzy, we correct? To go to the priest. Then why is Jesus saying, where are the nine? When he asked them to go. Because some of you, uh, smarter than me people, can say, well, Jesus asked them to go. So why is he asking, where are the nine? Because he asked them to go. And Jesus said, where are the nine when the one come back? Why? Because Jesus said this. Where is the instinct of praise? There should be an instinct. Jesus said, where are the nine? I've asked you to go and you receive your healing. But where was the instinct? There should be an instinct of praising us. There should be something in us that says, wait a minute, I need to go and praise. So Jesus is saying, I told you to go, you receive your healing, but it should have been triggering you to say, let me go back and praise him. So before you enjoy what Jesus has done for you, go to go and praise him. Before you enjoy what Jesus has done for you, give him some thanksgiving. There should be an instinct inside of you. There should be something that says, wait a minute, look at all that he's done for me. And this should be built inside of you because of the cross, because of the suffering, because of the blood, because of the salvation of your sin. It should be instinctive to praise him. Despite what's going on, despite where you're going, despite where you're walking, where is the instinct? That sometimes when the Lord does something for you, work, fall on your knees, fall on your face. There needs to be an instinct. Hallelujah. And it's interesting. The man had some spirituality inside of him. And he, the, it's interesting. The praise for Jesus superseded all other duties. Whatever you've got going on in earth, on the earth, that shouldn't supersede your praise. But the others, their, their reward superseded their praise. 
But whatever duty you've got, Jesus said, go and do your duty, go to the priest. But the man realized, the man realized that my duty is to praise. Now, if we understand this today, that is your duty to praise God. It's just your duty. It's your reasonable service. Just praise him. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting. Sometimes we're quiet. We're not expressive in praising God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're just chilling out. But the Bible says this man returned with a loud voice. Some of you in the, in the church were telling him to hold it down. Keep, you know, keep, keep quiet. You're embarrassing us. You're a bit radical. But the Bible says he returned with a loud voice. And I like, I like it when the saints praise God with a loud voice. And I love, I love that. I love hearing that with a, with a loud voice. Hallelujah. And it's interesting. This man had a spiritual revelation. Hear me well. Praise gives you revelation. When the prophet Elijah needed to prophesy, you know what he said? He said, bring me a musician. Because praise activates revelation. If you're someone who's a, a praise warrior, you have revelation. When Saul had an evil spirit, he said, David, come and play the harp to drive this spirit out. Hallelujah. Praise, music, worship does great things in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Is everyone still with me? And it's interesting. People will say to you, stop making noise, don't praise. I like it when people jump, when people fall on the floor, when people raise their hands, when people shout to the Lord. I love that. And look at this man. His praise had several elements that we can learn from. First of all, it was expressive. He wasn't standing there like he was in the library. Hallelujah. He wasn't standing there like, like he was bored. He had expression. And you know when you love something, you express that in a very dynamic and physical way. Hallelujah. You see, everyone, I don't know, let's speak. Many people have loved someone and that love was born out in expression. And if you love someone, it's not born out by what you say, it's born out in expression. And if you love someone with power, you see it in expression. And you see when you fall out in love with the person you love, you see that expression goes down. So what is your expression and your intensity and your power when you're worshiping the Lord? Hallelujah. He worshiped him with substance. His whole being was full of praise. Humility. Some of us cannot kneel before God. He, the Bible says he threw himself on the floor and at the feet of Jesus. Pure humility. And another thing, the passion was on show. Hallelujah. And you know what I like about this man? This man is different to many people. He was focused on himself. Some people are worshipping and you see them looking at other people like, oh, what are they doing? You know, what's going on there? Why are they doing that? You know, look, look at that. Some people are worshipping. Their phone rings. Like, yeah, yeah, hello, yeah, no. right in the middle of it. What's up? And then some people, you don't put your phone in airplane mode and you get a WhatsApp uh, a message from your boyfriend or girlfriend and you become more happy because they've texted you than, when, than communicating with God. Now, listen to this well. Jesus asked this man a question. He said to the man, where are the men? Now, at that time, some of you would turn super grass, hallelujah. And Jesus, you know those nine, yeah? That's what they went to the priest, they didn't come back. You know, Jesus, you know what? I've come back, and where are they? Look at them, they're terrible. When Jesus asked him the question, he was silent. He never answered, because his only focus was to praise and to be thankful. He wasn't worried about anyone else. And that's what kills people. People are too worried about other people, too worried about what other people have, too worried about what other people do, too worried about what other, other, other people live, too worried about what other people drive, too worried about what other people have there. Forget about other people and have your focus on Jesus. The reason why people suffer is because of things like Instagram, where you look, look at this person on holiday, and me, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in Hobbiton, right? Yeah. Look at this one person they're driving, and me, I don't have a car. Look at this person, what they're wearing, look at the bag that they have. Mildew, they just they don't even know in the back. Hallelujah. Look, you, some of these things that you don't even know, and you look and you suffer because you're too worried about other people. And the Bible says something. The children of Israel came to Simon and said, Come make us a king so we can be like other people. And that's when all their problems began. Don't worry about other people. Sin, look at God and focus on Him. Hallelujah. When you worry about other people, it will create a problem in your spirit. But it was a great question that Jesus asked. It was a very, very great question. He said, where are the nine? Hallelujah. So where, where are the nine? And sometimes I ask the question myself. In other words, why is it that only 10% of the people in church do all the work? Where, where are the nine? Why do we have to beg, scrape? We have to do all the... Is it 10% of people are doing the work in church? So ask yourself, where are the nine? 
Where are the line when we, it comes to evangelism? Where are the nine when it comes to giving to the poor? Where are the nine when it comes to giving? Where, where are the nine? It's just a question. And the nine represent people that want Jesus but don't want any responsibilities. No, 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 you, don't want, you just want Jesus, but you don't want it to come at a cost. Hallelujah. And you can't serve the Lord without a cost. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. I remember sitting down and I was reflecting. And uh, my daughter's 17. I remember I said, for the first 12 years of her life, I was just in church. There was a cost. She used to go to school and say, my dad works in church. There was, a, there was, there was a, there's always a cost. Hallelujah. So you cannot worship God and praise him in sincerity without a cost. Because there's always a cost. But the nine didn't care about the cost. Hallelujah. The nine, the, nine didn't, the nine didn't worry about the cost. And it's interesting, you can believe in him, but it doesn't mean you're someone of genuine praise. Because the ten, out of the ten, the nine, they believed in him. How do we know? Because they shouted at him for, for a solution. So they believed in him. But are you a person that has belief, but doesn't have a heart of praise? Because you can believe in him, but not have the praise. Hallelujah. And it's interesting. Jesus said something, and many of us should be in the 10%. Jesus commended this man. Jesus honored this man. Jesus said something to this man. He said, listen, your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. And praise is a blessing because it is acceptable to Jesus. Let us put our praise in the rightful place. Let us not wait for even Jesus to do something. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in your room. Praise him in your car. There are, there are openings ready for you just based upon your praise. If you look very, very well, when the people under King Jehoshaphat, there was a war against them. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send out the worship team first and just sing praise God because his mercy is just forever. And without one attack of the army, the enemy was falling down. Just get into your room. Get into your closet. If you need something from God, if you need to shift him, and the reason why that's important because praise changes the atmosphere. So when you really, really praise, there is something in the atmosphere that will just shift over your life. So if you're here today and you need to shift him, if you're here today and you need to change, if you're here today and you're going through something and you need that, to, you need that thing not to be changed what you're going through, if you're in, in a situation that is difficult, if you have pain anywhere in your life, if you need deliverance, if you need healing, just say, bow your head, fall on your feet, get at the feet of Jesus, lift up his name and say, God, I just want to praise you for who you are. God, I just want to give you thankfulness. I just want to be thankful to you. Yes, God, I want to worship you. Yes, God, it's not because of what you do, it's because of who you are. It's because of the cross. It's because I just love you. I want to spend time with you. It's just because, Lord, of all that I've seen that you've done for me, I can never repay you. Father, Lord, I bow at your feet and just say, Lord, I don't want to be like the nine and go and just receive and be a recipient of benefits. Father, I just want to give you all the praise and I want to thank you. Lift up your voice and be in your feet and give him praise. Hallelujah. Lift up your voices. Come on. Singers, can we have you please? Come on, worship you. If you want to speak with a loud voice, speak with a loud voice. Don't worry about what people think. Just worship your Lord. As the dear. Peace. Oh, come on, lift up your voice. Father, I thank you. And Father, I bless you. Father, we know we need a voice of praise and a heart of thankfulness to you. Father, let this spirit be upon us. And Father, as we return and fall at your feet, Father, Lord, you will say, our faith has made us well. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Father, we thank you. And Father, Lord, as... The one came back and you said, your faith made you well. Let this be our testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We need to run right quick. We've got five minutes before we need to exit. Hallelujah. Please, let's take our time and offerings. Hallelujah. It's a form of thankfulness. It's a form of, form of praise. A um, few people have come to me and said they want to do um, some feeding of the community and poor programs. And it needs to be paid for because my vision 
is for this church and this whole community to be known is that when people need something they can come to us and that is my heart and that's the part of the vision of being past Aussie that a poor person can come in here and we can buy them a pair of trainers we can buy them a computer we can buy them a bag we can go to old people and help them and if they need to be members of the church but we want this church to be known for our Islington as a place that helps the poor and these things cost and I always emphasize, no one here is paid, hallelujah. Pastor Ozzy is not, I'm not, Pastor Chris, nobody. So everything goes into the ministry. So please give cheerfully and you will be blessed. I'm going to teach a whole series on, on, on giving. And, uh, and you know it's not giving to extract any money so I can buy a new pair of shoes. No, hallelujah. Uh, it's just because there's a blessing in me and, I, and God has revealed it to me. So I want to speak to you about that. As you're preparing your time and offerings, hallelujah. This Saturday, 7 o'clock, we have a, a first program on a calendar, relationship uh, seminar. Please, everybody come. 7 o'clock this Saturday, it's going to be in here. Whether you're married, you want to get married, or you don't want to get married, or you want to get married, or, or, or you, there's no one good to marry, or there's loads of good people to marry, no one's asked you to marry, please come. Hallelujah. We're going to be, having, we're going to be teaching about some very specific things. So invite some friends, invite some people you know, and please come in. We've got. Our, has anyone? Has everyone looked at the calendar? Has everyone got? Has you, if you haven't got the calendar, raise your hand. Hello. So we're going to, need to circulate the church calendar. We've got programs. Even in July, we're going to Hyde Park for a picnic. Let's be honest. Some of you have never left East London. Hallelujah. So we're going to be in Hyde Park, and we're going to go to the, that, that side of town. We want you to join us and have fun with us. And we're going to do sort of things. We've got the women's conference. We've got a men's conference. We've got a youth conference. We even got health and nutrition. Hallelujah. On there, we're going to bring people in to speak to us how we can eat right, how we can exercise, and how these things impact our health. We've got career days where we're going to bring professionals in to talk to you about your careers. Hallelujah. I'm going to be teaching that day the science of selling. Hallelujah. There's a science behind it that God revealed to me. There's a science of selling. And I'm going to teach that on that day. Brother Chris is going to teach you about banking. We're going to bring doctors in. We're going to bring all types of people in to teach you, lawyers and all the types. Then we're going to have career days and we're going to help people with their CVs and getting into jobs. We want to be very practical with our help to you. We've got a packed calendar. We've got a whole uh, another conference, a joint conference where we're going to invite in the speakers. We've got a praise event. Hallelujah. Because we need, we have prayer meetings. But who agrees we need more praise meetings? Hallelujah. And we're going to have that. So we've got our concert. We've got a whole packed, uh, packed, packed thing. And we want you to be with us and want to join us. So please look at the calendar. What is very discouraging is when we have an event and like three of you turn up, hallelujah. Come, let's be serious and let's support what we're doing. Is that okay? May God bless you. The fasting uh, is, is, is going on. Who's, who's joined us in the fasting? Just wave us out, wave us. May God bless you, it's tough, hallelujah. But we we close at 6 p.m. today, hallelujah. We're praying on Zoom. If you haven't got the Zoom link, see Pastor Ozzy. 7 p.m. today, we're praying on Zoom. Hallelujah. So if you want to break your fast at six, feel free. If you want to hold on, also feel free. And we're, we're going to be fasting in every month. And who knows when you're fasting, it changes your prayer. You feel it. Hallelujah. And things get done. So join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. today to close our fasting. Hallelujah. Uh, is everyone still there? Is everyone still with me? Uh, ushers, can you please take the offering? We have to be out of here in a couple of minutes. Um, is this it? If there's a person here for the first time Sunday, just wave at me. Hallelujah. There is to such people. Now, one of the ways that church God will grow this ministry is for you guys. Hallelujah. And let's be a bit active in inviting someone to, to, to come to church. Let's be active in just trying to get people. If it's in your mind and it's, it's active, things will happen. Hallelujah. I know that the women's ministry has got to be responsible for bringing so many people into this church. Also, use individuals. Invite your friend. Invite your colleague. Invite your 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 neighbours. Invite strangers. Let us try and have a commitment that we will not come to church without at least trying to invite someone, trying to speak to someone, so they can come in and hear the word, come in and get saved. If you believe that's good, say Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the tithe and offerings. Father, we thank you and bless you for those that gave. Father, we know that this money will be used only to your glory. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give and bless the hands of those that gave.
And Father, anyone that's going through any financial difficulty, Father, lift them out of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be on your feet as we bring the service to an end. We have some weddings coming up this year. Hallelujah. And I believe and I'm praying for all the singles that they will even meet their people this year. And this year, 2023, will be a year full of blessings and marriages. Hallelujah. There's so many good things that we have to do on that. So please, if you're single, I'm praying for you every day. Hallelujah. And God will God will help you. Hallelujah. Is that okay? So, so you don't have to sing Beyonce. Just sing to God. Hallelujah. And God will will bring you the right person. I believe that everyone single can get married in this ministry to somebody that they can really be an awesome person is what I'm looking for. Someone that will, that will be fill you with joy. So let's have the expectation, but look at somebody and give them a COVID high five and say, praise is what I do. Find someone with a happy face and say, praise is what I do. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Let us share the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ together.